Hey dudes, and welcome back to The Bants. As always, I am your host, The Bants. And welcome to the first part of our first What's Happening in Fashion for the week. So without further ado, let's get right into it. And in this first part, of course, we're gonna be talking about our headline for the day. And in our headline of the day, I just wanted to give my thoughts on Payless's newest viral marketing campaign, and that is with their pseudo Palesi brand. But before we get started, there are two things I just want to quickly go over regarding this story. The first of which being that even though, yes, this channel is dedicated to talking about men's fashion and men's fashion news, even though this story here mainly revolves around women's fashion, my thoughts and takeaways from it really kind of regard fashion as a whole, so that's why I'm covering it. And the second thing is that from this point on, don't take everything I'm going to say in this video as black and white, because of course that's not always the case. Yes, I will be talking in majorities here, but obviously that's not always the case. Nothing is ever that cut and dry. The only reason I'm bringing it up now is so that I don't have to reiterate this point after every single comment I make. But now, with that all said, let's move on to the story. So what exactly happened here? Well, the brand Payless, which if you didn't know, is a very, very, very low tier shoe company, which is mainly marketed toward women and children, decided that they weren't really happy with the kind of vibe that people get off of them. That vibe, of course, being that they sell cheap shit shoes. So in an effort to combat this stigma and show the world that their shoes actually look better than what the majority think, they decided to come up with an idea. With the help of an advertising company, they rented out a small boutique space in LA, hired some salespeople and an interior designer, and came up with this. This, of course, being Palessi by Bruno Palessi. And obviously, if you couldn't already tell, Palessi being a play on their actual name, Payless. And under this new label, they were going to sell these same Payless shoes. But this time around, instead, they decided to mark up the prices on these shoes multiple, and I mean multiple times, so that the customers that came in the store would think that they were actually buying something from an Italian designer based on the prices here. All that was left now was to hit the streets and social media looking for fashionable people and influencers willing to take some time to come out for the opening of this new boutique under the guise of looking for feedback for the new designer. And of course, Payless was filming this entire event unbeknownst to all of the attendees. And now, Polesi's opening day has come and gone, and I'm sure you're wondering how it went for the brand. Well, actually, surprisingly well, depending on who you ask. You see, in regards to the people that attended the grand opening, they absolutely gushed over the shoes here. With people saying, and I quote, that these shoes were high quality, high fashion, and taking the shoe game to the next level, and even stunning, elegant, and versatile, just to name a few things. And not only were people talking highly about the Polesi brand, but many of them actually bought some of these shoes. These shoes that normally cost in the $30 range for three, four, five, and even six $600 a pair. Of course though, as soon as these items were purchased, the customers were taken into a back room where they were told the truth and then allowed to keep the shoes for their time. Then of course, the highlights from this show as well as many people's reactions were compiled into a video and released online a couple of days ago and it just seems like the internet exploded over this. And for as many news outlets as there was out there that decided to cover this, there was almost as many varying opinions on it as well. There were people that thought this was a good idea,
idea and many that thought it was a bad idea. People that found it hilarious and others that found it in poor taste. And even those out there that thought it was good for the company and those that thought it was terrible for the company and pretty much everything in between. However, with all of that now said, there are a bunch of people out there actually questioning the validity of this whole video. Seeing with how adamant Payless has been with their internet marketing strategies as of late. But assuming of course this video is real, my major takeaway from it is that this video just goes to show some of the real major problems in current fashion. Not so much in the current fashion industry, but more so regarding the current fashion culture. Now there are many reasons as to why I feel this way, and I might not have the time to cover them all in this video, but I will at least try and get to some of the more major points. And by far and above the first of those major points is influencers. God damn do I fucking hate influencers. Influencers are quite literally some of the dumbest fucking people on the planet. I mean, just go up to your average influencer and ask them about anything. It doesn't even have to be fashion related you're not going to get much of a response. Unless, of course, whatever brand or company they happen to be influencing for provided them with reading material that they can pair it back to you, but hopefully for the company at hand it was in somewhat of a large font and included a bunch of colorful pictures, otherwise more than likely the influencer probably wouldn't understand it. So of course when you show these idiots a shoe that's supposedly worth hundreds of dollars, they are going to praise it and agree with the price point. Because one, they might just be trying to stroke whatever ego the designer has to hopefully get a discounted and or free merchandise in the future, or two, because they're just trying to justify something, be it the knowledge they supposedly have on the product so they can look good to their peers, or because they need to justify the price of something they bought instead. Because that's exactly what being an influencer is. It's entirely about getting your e-dick sucked. It's purely about name dropping brands or showing off exactly how expensive something was, it never ever has to do with the actual product itself. Which leads back to these people's reviews on these shoes, referring to them as high fashion and luxurious. Of course they're gonna say that because they don't know shit about the quality of these shoes. They probably just have a difficult enough time every day remembering to fucking breathe for Christ's sake. But this now leads into my second major problem here, that being the quality and the price. Now if you don't know a lot about fashion and aren't trying to project to people that you do, I can completely understand why it would be hard to differentiate between the quality of certain pieces. Because when you're looking at something like a nice pair of denim or a highly technical jacket, the very minute details of the piece can really come off as inconsequential if you don't know what you're looking for. But one thing that has always been a very hard pill to swallow for a lot of people is that unfortunately nowadays in fashion, quality doesn't always equivocate to price. And that is especially the case when it comes to women's clothes. For example, when was the last time you ever heard a lady say, I buy Louboutins because they're comfortable and they're made really well. Don't worry, I'll wait. And on a somewhat kind of related note, ladies out there, I am so sorry for every single one of you that has ever had to deal with a shitty pair of denim, because lord knows there is a lot. I mean a lot of shitty women's denim out there. No, what women are paying for instead of quality and comfort usually is creativity in their designs. Obviously excluding fast fashion on both fronts because that's all just trash anyway. However, aside from fast fashion, there is one other type of fashion out there where everybody pays a premium price, and that is of course in luxury fashion. And people will commonly ask, when you're dealing with luxury brands, are you overspending on the products here? 
And even though there is some defense that can be said here, for the most part, yes, but that's inherent. I mean, it's literally in the name. These are luxury pieces from a luxury brand. What you're paying for in these pieces is the exclusivity of it all. Sure, you can defend some of these purchases from some of their more limited edition stuff, some more of their kind of runway stuff as being somewhat worth the price, but usually it's just not the case, especially when we're talking about the essential pieces from these luxury brands. Things such as t-shirts and different types of accessories, such as belts, wallets, watches, sunglasses, things like that. Because when you buy things like these from these luxury brands, you're solely paying for the name. Because all of these types of pieces are outsourced from the brands themselves and just have their logos slapped on at the end, which basically means that this is free money for any of the fashion houses out there that do this. Just take a look at all the brands out there that use Luxottica to make their sunglasses. I mean, we're talking Coach, Chanel, and Prada, just to name a few. And on the flip side, brands like Fossil make watches for everybody from Diesel to Armani to Burberry and plenty more. And I know it might seem like with this part of the conversation, I might have diverged away from my whole case in point about Paylessi, but there's a reason why I talked about all this. The reason is, is that in the last couple years, in the last decade, there's been a huge, huge rise in these pseudo luxury fashion companies. These of course are companies that don't have quality behind them, don't have a history of quality behind them, and really only just have a super expensive price point solely for the fact that they can get away with it and basically say fuck you to the customers. And I'm not saying that I necessarily have anybody in mind when I'm speaking about these pseudo luxury fashion houses, but there definitely are some bigger offenders out there than others. But when companies out there, and in this case Payless, show that they can sell a $30 shoe for $600, it only just goes to justify what those pseudo luxury fashion houses are doing, which is just basically selling garbage for exponential prices. And I mean, that should never ever be a thing, ever. And even though I'd really like to discuss more, even dive deeper into some of the subjects I've already talked about, I'm starting to run really low on time. So let's just get to my third and final point. And that is of course, just the effects that this kind of video has on the fashion community as a whole. Now, some of you may remember a couple of years ago, late night host Jimmy Kimmel kind of did a somewhat similar prank video to what we see here from Payless. For those of you who don't know, basically what he did is he sent one of his fake reporters down to New York Fashion Week to talk to anyone there, once again mainly influencers, about people that were showing at the shows or about new and upcoming designers. The only thing thing is, is that all the shows he talked about, all of the photos he showed from runway shows, and all the designers that he said were up and coming, none of them existed. But that didn't keep influencers from talking about how cool, interesting, or underground all of these things were. It also led to the rise of this meme here. So if you have seen this in the past, this is where it came from. And even though the Jimmy Kimmel sketch was definitely meant to be a little bit more demeaning than this Payless advertisement was, the effect is still pretty much the same. Now, I'm not trying to say that fashion, in this case fashion culture or fashion as a hobby or anything along those lines is any type of serious business, but when you take things like this and show them to just the public at large, it really does a nice job of diluting what fashion is all about. When people outside of the sphere of fashion see videos along these lines, it really just goes to discredit fashion as a hobby or an interest. Because what the public sees is influencers who are really just 
fucking dumb as shit. And they take those people as the average fashion enthusiast. And it really does an amazing job at discrediting anybody who has an actual interest in fashion because we get lumped in with those same stupid fucking idiots who only can really drop a name or recognize a logo. And kind of going back to the same ideas I had on the quality and price issues, when the general populace sees videos like this, it also does a very nice job at discrediting the people that actually make really nice high-end quality clothes because people can just dismiss that now and go why are you paying so much for that it probably only cost this much to make anyway which I'm sure if you're a fan of fashion, we've all had that conversation at least once. And yes, we all know exactly how infuriating that can actually be. And really, when it comes down to it, there's no better way to sum it up than it just sucks. It just fucking sucks. But going back full circle now, do I think it works out for Payless? Yeah. I definitely think it worked for Payless. Because whether if someone out there thinks it's cool that they can pass off their $30 shoes as $600 now, or whether you're somebody who absolutely hates the idea of that, the fact of the matter is, is that everybody is talking about it now. And whether it's bad or good, when it comes down to it, all publicity is good publicity. And Payless definitely got a ton of publicity out of this. But now that I've talked your ears off and given my opinion on pretty much everything, what do you all think about all of this? Do you think this was good for Payless or do you think this was bad for Payless? How do you feel about the whole marketing campaign they used in general? And do you guys have as many strong thoughts about this as I do? Or maybe you have a completely different opinion, a more positive opinion about this. Or maybe there's another idea that I missed or didn't have time to cover that you'd like to discuss as well. Whatever your thoughts, ideas, or opinions on all this, I'd love to know what you guys think. But with that now all said, thank you guys for sticking around and watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I will see all of you guys tomorrow.